SpaceX is gearing up for its second orbital Starship launch attempt, and this time, Elon Musk is optimistic about its chances of reaching orbit. The increased confidence stems from a tremendous number of overhauls made, and of course, the launch pad is a big part of that. But what makes Elon Musk so confident in Starbase's launch pad? Let's find out the answer as well as learn more about what's going on with the second orbital flight test in today's episode of Great Space. SpaceX. On April 20th of 2023, SpaceX launched the first orbital test flight of its Starship spacecraft from Boca Chica on the Gulf Coast of Texas. The combined thrust of nearly 33 Raptor engines exceeds the power generated by the Saturn V rocket employed during the Apollo program. This immense force was focused directly into the concrete foundation of the launch pad known as Stage Zero by SpaceX. Unfortunately, the concrete base proved inadequate for such a formidable challenge. During the launch, massive portions of Earth and concrete were propelled hundreds of meters through the air, creating a cascade of projectiles that reached over 500 meters away, showering the surrounding area. The aftermath revealed a fine shower of debris scattered throughout the vicinity, along with unexpected damage once the road was reopened. Tanks were contorted, the facility strewn with fragments, and a colossal crater had formed beneath the launch pad itself. All of this proved that Starbase's launch pad concrete was not strong enough. However, that is going to be changed. There's a massive upgrade of the launch site that's happening. Musk recently shared that Starbase builders are in the process of adding roughly a thousand cubic meters of steel reinforced high strength concrete at the Boca Chica, Texas launch tower that will be part of a water cooled steel plate system. Indeed, concrete trucks have started to arrive at the orbital launch mount since last weekend, and the pumper arm is starting to get into place for the big pour. On Monday morning, SpaceX completed the concrete foundation under the orbital launch mount. Over a period of 10 and a half hours, 132 loads of concrete were delivered to the launch complex. This is equivalent to almost exactly a thousand cubic meters. This will need a few days to cure before the next steps can begin. This is designed to mitigate the potential of shattering concrete caused by the 33 Raptor engine's powerful thrust upon liftoff as it did during the first flight. On top of that, SpaceX has a sort of a steel sandwich, which is basically two thick plates of steel that are welded together with channels going through perforations in the top, so it'll actually shoot a lot of water out. Think of it like a gigantic upside down showerhead. It's going to basically blast water upwards while the rocket is over the pad to counteract the massive amount of heat from the booster. The booster is basically like the world's biggest cutting torch with a massive amount of heat, but also a massive amount of force, Musk explained. The modifications should leave the base of the pad in much better shape than last time, he said. Those changes gave Musk more confidence in the success of the next launch. I think the probability of this this next flight working, getting to orbit is much higher than the last one. Maybe it's like 60%, Musk said. In an online conversation in late April, he estimated a better than 50% chance of success on the next launch. However, Musk did not commit to a specific launch date either. A lot of variables here that are outside of our control, he said, an apparent reference to the Federal Aviation Administration launch licensing process. We think probably the launch pad upgrades and the booster and ship are ready in about six weeks, Musk said in that April conversation, expecting to be ready to fly in a couple months. SpaceX is too busy making rockets go boom and zoom to care about what others are doing. They only care about making their own rockets go faster and farther. That's why SpaceX is always ahead of the game in the space race. The latest evidence of this is in the first half of 2003 alone. SpaceX successfully launched 44 rockets comprising 41 Falcon 9s, 2 Falcon Heavies, and 1 Starship. While they have fallen slightly behind the target of 100 launches, there is ample time remaining in the year for them to catch up. Furthermore, SpaceX has expedited its launch rate by implementing a new trick. To achieve 100 launches this year, SpaceX would need to launch once every 3.65 days, or about 3 days and 18 hours between launches. In the first half of the year, their launch rate was approximately one launch every 4.05 days, not including Starship. This accelerated pace has been made possible by launching nearly every week and occasionally conducting back-to-back -back or double-header launch days. Over the past few months, SpaceX has significantly intensified its operations, and although they will observe a brief 
brief hiatus until their next launch, the first weekend of July will witness another double header of launches. One purported reason for this increased launch cadence is a new design for the second stage nozzle, which was introduced in April. This shorter nozzle is less efficient and can transport fewer payloads into orbit. However, for certain payloads, the cost advantage outweighs the reduced efficiency. Moreover, this design reportedly enables faster production. While we have become accustomed to reusing Falcon 9 first stages and payload fairings, the second stage remains expendable. By reducing the time required to construct a new second stage, SpaceX can minimize the downtime between launches. Considering the current 2023 manifest, which includes 31 launches and the addition of any Starlink missions, it is plausible that SpaceX may achieve the 100 launch milestone or come remarkably close to it. ULA, meanwhile, faces new delays with the Vulcan Centaur rocket after the company said it needs to make minor reinforcements to certain parts of the Centaur upper stage. In a brief statement early June 24th, ULA said it would remove the Centaur upper stage that had been installed on the Vulcan booster at Cape Canaveral for that inaugural launch and ship it back to the company's Decatur, Alabama factory. The Vulcan booster will remain at the Cape stored in a horizontal processing facility. The decision to destack the rocket came after ULA completed the investigation into an anomaly during a March 29th test of a Centaur at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Hydrogen leaked from the Centaur, accumulated inside the test stand, and ignited, damaging the stage. ULA said in the statement it had identified the root cause of that incident and has planned the necessary corrective actions. Centaur's thin-walled pressure-stabilized tanks require minor reinforcement at the top of the forward dome prior to flight. We plan to destack the Vulcan rocket and return the Centaur 5 to Decatur for modifications, the company stated. It also said it has several Centaur stages at Decatur, one of which will be used to complete the qualification testing interrupted by the March incident. ULA did not disclose a schedule for completing that testing, modifying the Centaur, or rescheduling the inaugural launch of Centaur, a mission called CERT-1 by the company. The company said it will host a media teleconference in the next few weeks to provide more details. In an interview in May, Tori Bruno, president and chief executive of ULA, said that if the Centaur required no modifications, he expected the CERT-1 launch to take place in early summer. If Centaur modifications are needed, that launch would be further delayed, but I don't expect it to get out of the year. At the time of that interview, the last major test for Vulcan before its first launch was a static fire test of the booster's BE-4 engines on the pad, called the Flight Readiness Firing. That test took place June 7th, and in the new statement, ULA said it completed the review of data from the firing and concluded all test objectives were successfully achieved. The primary payload of the CERP-1 launch, which is expected to take place later this year, is Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander. This lander will carry out the first commercial mission to the moon and be the first American spacecraft to land on the moon since the Apollo program. The launch will also include two prototype satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper broadband constellation and a payload for Celestis, a company that offers memorial services in space. This mission represents a milestone for the commercial space industry and a new era of lunar exploration and development. We hope that it will inspire future generations of scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs to pursue their dreams and ambitions in space. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX as well as what's going on over at ULA. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link to our Patreon in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.